This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Sony Dash. This is what they call a personal internet device or a home information device. It's, it's a little hard to describe it, and that's why we're going to show you how the product works in the video, because there's nothing quite like it except maybe the Chumbi. For those of you who are tech fanatics, you might remember the Chumbi. It was a three and a half inch device that got all sorts of information in term, using widgets or applications and it showed you on screen. This instead has a 7-inch capacitive touchscreen, a typical of Sony's really sharp, clear, and vibrant. And it's meant to be more of something that you put in the bedroom or in the kitchen or whatever it is, wherever it is that you need what this has to offer. Uh, it's rubberized on the sides. It's very rugged, yet it's attractive looking. It's, it's thicker than a photo frame. I'll turn it on the side so you can see. It's a big old wedge. And that's to provide stability. Say you use this as your bedside alarm clock and you whack on the big old snooze button, you don't want to tip it over and you don't want it to be too delicate. It's easy to clean and wipe down in case you do use it in the kitchen. It's a shiny surface here that cleans easily. This is a heat vent. The product does get warm. And up top here, you see the snooze button that doubles as the menu button to bring up controls and the volume keys. On this side, there's a door over ports for USB, you could plug in a USB driver, USB key, and a stereo 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now Sony hasn't yet implemented the USB functionality. It just says coming soon when you try to use that feature. It will be nice when it's here because then you can use it like a traditional photo frame as well. Just put a bunch of pictures on there or music. It supports MP3 playback or videos as well. So what exactly is the Dash? The Dash is Again, a lifestyle device. It's a clock. It provides weather here. You can have multiple cities and you'll notice it's cycling through. If you tap on it, you get the forecast for the week. For that place, you can have dual times if you want to keep track of time in two places. Tap the menu button, you can go back home. It's real easy to use. There aren't much in the way of instructions with this because it's fairly intuitive. There are two themes available. This is the first theme and the most easy to understand. So you've got your applications or widgets cycling through here and this controls going to themes and apps. You can download apps and we'll show you how that looks in a minute. You can go to videos which brings up a huge menu of video possibilities, music, photos, and a couple of system settings. Let's first take a look at these applications. There are about almost 1,500 applications available now. This is the Chumbi platform. And I, I always thought it was kind of a cult classic little device that not many people use, but as it turns out, Chumbi has been powering set-top boxes, Samsung photo frames, and Sony products now at this point. This also has the Bravia Internet TV software on it, so you can watch some video sources that are unique to this that aren't available on the Chumbi platform. As you can see, it's cycling through the applications that I have here. This one is an email viewer, in fact. You just enter your mail server settings, and then you can view your email for POP3. There are ones for Gmail as well. I haven't found anything for Exchange yet. And if you want to move through here, you can rush your widgets along. They rotate for, you can set, 15 to 30 seconds, depending. So here's New York Times Top Stories. You can have... ESPN Sports, E Entertainment, about four channels of those, all sorts of information sources from the internet. In addition to that, you can have Flickr feeds for photos, photo bucket feeds, so you can turn it into a big old photo frame. There's Facebook, as you can see, it's logging on right now. When you cycle through, there's also Twitter. And yes, you can make posts directly from the device using the touch screen and an on screen keyboard. So it's not completely passive consumption. This is a webcam from Times Square. It's an amazing selection of things. There are stock quotes, weather, AccuWeather, Yahoo Weather, Weatherbug Weather. Here we have Twitter. You can see how that loads. There's a gadget application, stock quotes, drawing application. Let's see if we can get Flickr up next. So say you're in Flickr here and I just have 
a feed right now of the interesting pictures from the last seven, seven days from Flickr. And you want that to go full screen, just tap on that little corner dog ear, and it's going to do that. If you want to see that previous picture again, you can just swipe back. Touchscreen is fairly responsive. I wouldn't say it's up there with the iPhone exactly, but it's probably a little bit more ruggedized. Clearly it's a very beautiful screen. If you want to get out of that, you just hit the menu button. It's that easy to use. Let's take a look at the videos. It's probably the most impressive feature on this. This supports Netflix for your watched instantly queue, and it really plays well. It does better than a netbook. Likewise goes for Amazon's Video On Demand. We'll show you that too. Plays really well and the screen is, is just luscious for that. You've got YouTube on here and that looks great. Blip TV, Daily Motion, Sony Sources, CBS, USB Drive, not yet supported but still listed there. eHow, How to Do Videos, Fear.net, Horror and Suspense, Movie Network, Howcast, and a bunch of free Michael Jackson videos too. Epicurious. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of recipe applications too from Martha Stewart and cook various cooking sites. And some of them even have little videos built in and sound bites to give you instructions on how to cook. So we're going to take a look at Amazon's video on demand first. This, this can link with your Amazon account, with your Netflix account, with Pandora, and with Slacker Radio. And that's a Sony value added that's not part of the Chumby platform. I'm going to take a look at stuff that's already in my library. Obviously, you can buy stuff and shop around for SD and HD content. I'll pick a movie that I've been watching. So you can see, get information about the movie here. You can just hit watch now. This uses Wi Fi 802.11bg to stream content to the device. So Amazon Unbox checks the speed every time and it's going to pick up where I left off after doing some buffering. Once it has buffered initially, the playback is very smooth. There's no gaps, pauses, stutters. So that's Amazon, and here's your pause button. You can fast forward and rewind. And next, we'll take a look at Netflix. So, this can be your bedside video player or something for your spare room or something great for the kids' room because it's pretty rugged, too. People willing to kill for the cause. <laughs> One day, my radical brothers managed to blow themselves up. I lost that little family. <coughs> okay. Now we'll take a look at YouTube. So you can see you can log into your account if you want to, or you can just look at search for videos, or we're just going to look at featured videos in this case. So when you hit play, you get it over here first, and if you tap on it, it'll fill up the screen. I want some high quality flash video. So there are many more video options, and this video that we're doing right now would be about two hours long if we covered them all. Instead, we're going to move on and take a look at some other stuff. Speaking of Flash, this has games, which, as far as I can tell, are Flash-based games. The device supports multiple channels. We were looking at my main channel right now, and I'm going to switch to the games channel so you can see games. Games are probably the weakest, though. So we've got mini golf here. Missile 3D, which uses the accelerometer. This does have an accelerometer built in, and it has a microphone, too. And here's a slot machine game. So you can play games in the window like this, or you can bring them up to full screen. So.
So here's the Martha Stewart cooking application. There's a recipe of the day, and then you can see recent recipes that have been listed. So macaroni and cheese, kind of boring. So let's check out recent recipes. So you can scroll through these various recipes and say we want to do the pan seared turkey cutlets with wine sauce. Just tap on that. See the email link appears here. You can actually mail this to yourself. You can hear Martha talk. VLB for chicken cutlets would work equally well with this mustardy pan sauce. You can get a list of ingredients. Make this big so you can see it. And directions on how to cook it. This is a Linux-based device. It probably helps. There are lots of applications out there. It seems to be fairly easy to develop for it. I'm going to show you how you browse applications on the device itself. So you've got a category listing here of all sorts of things. Calendars, animals, animation, community, communication, social networking, weather, news, video, weird stuff, a bazillion webcams. So say you're interested in sports. Baseball headlines, BBC News and Sports, CBS News, NHL News, all sorts of football news, anything you're interested in, you just want to add it and you tap on it and you hit add. It's as simple as that and then it's one of your available applications. Again, all applications are free on the device. This sells for $199. It's available at Sony Style Stores and for many other retailers. It has Wi-Fi for internet connectivity and it must be plugged into AC if you want to use it. There are no batteries for this. This is meant to be sitting by your bed, in your kitchen, whatever. You can, of course, unplug it, pick it up and take it from room to room. It takes about two minutes to fully boot when you do that. So that's the Sony Dash. Visit mobiletechreview.com to read our full review.